Maya, when you first read this proposal, what was your initial reaction? Well, um, I, I will start where we just ended, which is it is kind of crazy that we haven't even finished figuring out the budget for this year while we're starting to think about next year's budget. So my first response is always, my gosh, our budget process is completely and utterly broken. We need to fix it. It is a political document. This isn't going into effect in any way. So I looked at what the statements that they're trying to make are. And this is a budget that raises a lot of revenue, a lot of revenue, and it's very focused, obviously, on raising those revenues from the well-off and from corporation, corporations. It then turns around and spends a great deal amount of that money. So it is a tax and spend budget. It is also a budget that does save $3 trillion um, over the 10 years in deficit savings. It's great that it reduces the deficit, but that falls far short of where we need to go. We would need $8 trillion in savings just to keep the debt as a share of GDP where it is right now, which is already too high. Well, Maya, how much do taxations here really start to close the gap? And do you think that taxes are really the biggest part of the issue here? Do you think which is a bigger problem, taxes or the spending? Yeah, so when you look at the federal budget, there are going to be different views about what our budget should like look like. Do you want a big government? Do you want a small government? Either of them can be fiscally responsible if you're actually willing to pay for those policies. But the truth of where we are right now with our debt as a share of GDP almost at record levels, our interest payments uh, larger than defense this year, which is very dangerous, we are going to have to look at every single part of the budget for savings. And this budget fails to do that. It gets high marks on being willing to raise revenues, but it continues to perpetuate the belief that we're only going to raise revenues on the very high end or corporations. And frankly, the budget hole is so big, that's just not realistic. There are going to have to be larger tax cuts when our politicians are willing to start talking about the truth. But the other side of the budget, the spending, that's where the real growth is. It's in our health care programs. It's in our retirement programs. It's in interest on the debt. And this budget does do some important savings on Medicare. But I'll tell you the two big things it leaves out. They want to extend a big portion of the Trump tax cuts no idea how they're going to pay for that. They say they, they don't put in the details there. And they leave Social Security, which desperately needs to be fixed because the program's trust funds will be insolvent in a decade, completely unattended to. They have principles, but no policies. So a budget that doesn't address the biggest problems and only looks at revenue increases instead of spending cuts isn't going to be something that's going to get the job done, and this doesn't. And it certainly isn't going to be something that works on a bipartisan basis, and this wouldn't. But that's that's not budget politics right now. It's it's a statement of where their priorities are, but not a realistic blueprint for how to have a fiscal turnaround, which we really do need as quickly as possible. 